All right, continuing on with 12.3, we're going to look at surface area of a pyramid and cones. Um, so really um, searching for that um, top point that we have talked about in class. And one of the first things that comes to my mind when I look at pyramids, um, the solid shapes and geometry, is just um, the pyramids in Egypt. And we know that they all come to that point and um, all sit on a polygon on the ground. So looking at the definition of a pyramid, it is a polyhedron, like we've talked about before, um, which tells me that my base is a polygon and my lateral faces are all triangles with a common vertex, a point. So we can look at um, the key terms are polyhedron, my base is a polygon, whether that be a triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon, all my lateral faces are triangles and I have a vertex or a common point. All right, and um, we have also talked about that pyramids are classified by the base of, or the shape of their base. So if it is a pentagon, it'll be a pentagonal pyramid um, and so forth. So um, the vertex of the pyramid is the common um, vertex of the lateral faces of the pyramid. So if you look over to the left, um, you can tell that all their lateral faces join together at that top point um, that will be called my vertex. <coughs> um, looking at a regular pyramid, um, this has regular polygons for the base and the segments joining the vertex in the center of the base is perpendicular to the base. Um, our lateral faces will also be congruent isosceles triangles. Um, the biggest thing there that you can recognize is the regular polygon for the base, and we know that regular polygons have congruent angles and congruent sides. Um, if you, we will have to recognize our slant height, and I think of a slant as like a hill. So we're going to look at the height of the slant or the um, possibly the lateral faces height. Um, so it's the height of the lateral face to the regular pyramid. So to the right, here is the slant face there. Um, you can also differentiate the height of the triangle, which is just from the vertex down to the base. But the height, that would be your height, but the slant height is actually on top of that um, lateral face. So you can differentiate those two heights that will be needed um, to solve the surface area today. Moving on to cones, since I am, my brain focuses on athletics a lot of times, I think of cones as being those cones that you maybe don't like to see on the field that you have to run around or something, but um, a cone has a circular base and a vertex that is not in the same plane as the base. So just looking for that circular um, part of this solid. Uh, um, the vertex of the cone is the point that is located at a perpendicular distance from the base. So again, it's that top point and we know that it's perpendicular to the base. A right cone is formed by segments joining at the vertex and the center of the base is perpendicular to the base. Again, um, a lot like that vertex. And the slant height is the distance between the vertex and the point on the base edge. So again, looking at kind of how a hill looks, the hill is slanted, or my car is slanted going down the hill, so I'm looking at that height. And lateral surface will tell us that all the segments that connect the vertex with the points on the edge. So it's almost like a curved surface because those slant heights have to be touching the base of the cone. Using all of that information, let's get into our first example. Um, finding the area of just a lateral face, and again, I will remind you that our lateral face is everything but the base. So I will just outline the lateral face in this figure, and we can label it as a square pyramid. The square is the base, remember, and 
the lateral faces come to a point on top called the vertex, so that's why I can say it's a square pyramid. Alrighty, so wanting to find that um, lateral faces area, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find it, and they have created that height right there, and they have taken that triangle out over here and labeled it. So we'll just plug in the information. So our slant height, our hypotenuse, equals our height, 97 squared, um, plus one half the base, which would be 45 squared. So I would get a prox or L squared equals 11, 434. And I'm gonna square root both sides to get that L by itself and I would get it plus or minus the square root of 11,434, which is approximately 106.93. So that would be my L. I have to start out with that. And then since it's a triangle, I'm going to use my triangle formula. Area equals one-half base times our slanted height. So I would say one half times our base, which would be 90 up top. If you look at your base is 90. And we just found our slant height, which was 106.93. And we can say it is approximately 4,811.85. And again, we're still looking at area, so we have to keep it in square centimeters. So that's really just solving the area of a triangle like we have been. And now we're going to use that slant height and finding the area to find the surface area of our regular pyramids. And this will work for any regular pyramid. So it would say um, our surface area equals the area of our base, kind of like yesterday, plus one half the perimeter of a base times our slant height, which is L. Again, it is the base area. So whatever my base is, I'm going to find the area of that. Uh, plus one half the perimeter of the base times our slant height. So let's go ahead and use that in one of our examples. Not too far. Find the surface area of a regular hexagonal pyramid. First, we need to find the area of the base using our formula we learned last chapter. Um, remember, the A is our apothem that goes from the center to the side of the figure, and the perimeter is the um, all the way around. So they have given us our apothem. It is 4 square root of 3. And we can find our perimeter because we know that each side is 8 inches and we have 6 of those. So we can say 6 times 8 which would give us 48 inches. Now we need to find the B, our area of our base. So 1 half times our apothem times our perimeter which would give us a area of 96 square root of 3, keeping that as um, trying not to round too soon, keeping it exact as exact as we can. So we can just fill in our base that we just found. So 96 square root of 3, the base area, plus 1 half the perimeter, which we got 48, times the slant height, which is 18 from above. Remember, just being able to recognize that slant height will be important. Alrighty, so if we simplify, we're going to keep 96 square root of 3 plus, we would get 432. Putting those both together, we would get approximately 598.3 square inches would be our surface area of this hexagonal uh, pyramid. Alrighty, and our next formula, and if you don't notice or you haven't been working on memorizing these formulas, you might want to do so. That way, to come test time, we don't have to scramble around to memorize them. So the surface area of a right 
cone. Remember that right can come from that vertex down to the center and it be a right angle. Um, the area of our base plus one half the circumference of our base times the um, slant height. Or you can say our area of our base, of course, is pi r squared because it's a circle, plus one half times our circumference, which is two pi r times the slant height. And if you notice that those two really do cancel, so I'll rewrite it, pi r squared plus pi r l. All right, and in words, again, our surface area equals the base area plus one half the circumference of the base times the slant height, which again is that slanted um, from the vertex to the side of our base. All right, and last, using that formula to practice, we want to find the area of the right cone. Right tells us that we can create that height right there of the cone. So the base has a radius of three meters. Just looking at that as a 2D circle, we can still say our radius is three. And the cone has a slant height of five meters. From the vertex to the base would be our slant height right there. So let's just plug it into our equation. So pi r, which is three squared, plus pi times our radius, three, times our slant height, which is five. So nine pi plus 15 pi gives us 24 pi, which is approximately 75.4 square meters. All right, and we are done, imagine that. Um, go ahead and do checkpoint number one and two. These will, again, be helping you to remember the equations that we need to make sure that we know and start to memorize so it can come um, natural to us rather than having to always go back and look at what kind of equation do I need to use. Um, if you want to pause it and work those and then um, Play it back so you can check your answers with mine here is number one and number two. I hope you have a good day and so I know that you watch this video and listen to it. Why don't you write math is fun on the bottom of your note taking guide or in the homework box. So have a great day. Um, thanks for watching.